uh, just to let you know. Um, and we hope to be able to uh, post the recording afterwards. So that's it. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Well, I am Felipe Espinosa, and I'm going to show you some of our work about monitoring DNS services using open source solutions. I'm going to skip this part. Wait, if you can do this presentation. Okay. Everyone here, I think, has been what DNS is and how it works at decentralized name services and peer scale. We have uh, different resources to it. And I'm going to talk more about Nick Chile at the start. Uh, Nick Chile was found in 1986, 87, I think. And he was a DevOps office at the University of Chile. And at 19, uh, 20, 2007, we found Nick Chile Research Lab, where we do, we do most of our research about DNS services and, and networking. Um, Nick Chile currently is uh, administrating the .cl country code top level domains. We have more than 5,500,000 registered domains. We use more than 26 nodes distributed in more than 10 different countries. And we also use two different DNS cloud services, that is NetNode and Packet Clearinghouse. So we have a pretty good coverage for maintaining the DNS services running. Um, I've got some concepts of why the DNS modernity is interesting. Um, this, is why, this is a picture from the GitHub attack that happened recently, where they detected a uh, Pretty big DDoS attack that was speaking like 1,500 1, gigabytes of data. Um, it was pretty important to have the monitoring set up in this in this type of attack because they can they can detect it pretty easily and and react fastly to react the traffic and detect what why it was happening. But what happened is instead of monitoring how many bits we have in and out of our network, we can detect the and X domains, for example. Now, they're not found domains we have answered, we are answering. In this way, we can see well, why why are these responses are happening, for example. Are they are they a valid response? Like are they going like google.com, the .cl, or are they just random random domain domain, random domains names? For example, what happens if they are random domain names, that, that means we are under attack. And if we are responding as valid domain names, that means that all resolvers are not working correctly. We also had, for example, the Dean DNS attack that happened in 2016 that affected more than 1,000 domains and it was speaking at 1.2 terabytes. Actually, the, between every event in this attack, it happened like two hours between the detection and the resolution of the attack. So it's pretty important to detect it as fast as possible and have the more information you can about the different events that happens, so you can react and do the mitigate, different mitigations that you can do. Now, how is this DNS monitor today? Uh, so it's the most common tool are DSC that was developed by OARC. That uh, this tool do a pre aggregation of the information that the uh, DNS services receives, like the query type, the operation code, and the response code. It sums up um, all the different types that it receives and it uses to a central services and shows a graph like we have in the presentation with the result of how many queries we are receiving. We also have DNS stats uh, that are used for some of the root services. That in this one, you can add the information and send it in a CDNS format, I think it was named. And at, and at the end, they show in their own presentation solution. And finally, we have some not that well known that is Central that was developed by Thin Labs. That uh, and this tool does, does the transfer of all the all the pickups of the, of the, the different DNS services and transfer it to a Hadoop cluster to do the processing. Now we weren't convinced about these solutions right now, so how we can and we start looking how we can improve this process. For example, if we didn't want to send all the packages and duplicate it in all the network load that we had, or and we we wanted to have a more fine grain information about the, about the services that we are running. 
So uh, in our first try, we tried to develop a Rata DNS or real time analysis of DNS package, where we did the capture and the information reduction onto different services and transfer it on a to a race queues and transfer it to a race queue and finally show the information in our own presenter. But we saw that we were doing our own capture of information, our own storage and our own visualization, and, they, and that took a lot of our resources and we start looking like there are some parts of this process that are already done and they have already an, a community behind them. And many, um, maintaining this type of system is not that easy. And if you can use some open source software and share of experience with others, maybe you could do a little better. So we try a uh, second time that is using open source software. So instead of developing everything, we want to use different open source software for the different work that we have to do. Many parts of them that are already developed, like storage system, there is many different ways to store the information that we are producing, and also many forms of visualizing the information, creating different alerts, for example, and many things in production. Yes? The system that you developed first, did you open source that? Have you published it? Yeah, it's, it's some associated on our GitHub at Niclabs. So you can also search it this from the DNS. There is also an open demo yeah. with some information that how you But you're not using it yourself. No, we are not using it. Okay. It's a demo. So what we wanted to measure some of the metadata of the package like daytime, server time, IP version, IP prefix, network protocol. Most mostly this this information is done with the other monitoring systems. We also have the query, the response, the variation code, class type. But we also, one of the most important one is the question. Many of them don't store the question because it's long and storing is pretty hard. It consumes a lot of, a lot of space. And also the other modular system to a aggregation, like we receive 10, 10 questions, one and 10 answers. We got a hundred operation code one, for example, and we wanted to separate them in different in so we can analyze them most more easily. Okay, so we def define different requirements for the capture, for the storage, and for the digitalization. Um, this the capture we wanted it to be secure, fast, and low cost because it's it's pretty close to the DNS services right now. For the storage, we want it to be unitary so we can differentiate different packages and get the, how many, for example, K or how many errors, where the queries are coming from, why, what are they asking, for example. We want it to be fast to process because of the big volume of information we have and for it to be scalable because, well, if you have more information, you need to add more storage. And at the end for the visualization, we had we wanted a fast access, relevant, yeah, we wanted to show relevant information, and alert of different anomalies we can detect. For this, we selected different open source software to analyze. I'm going to start for the capture process that we look at for software like PacketBit, Collective, FIBO, DSC, that is already in use, and Composite DNS. In this process, we, we we look for the different features they have, and we found that many of them don't support, for example, fragmentation of IPv4 or IPv6, that, and that's a pretty important part of the DNS collections. Also, the TCP, for example, FIBA and Collective don't support reading for that protocol, and there, there is many packages that go through TCP. And also, we look for the disaggregated information that we can provide, and we saw that not many managed to give us the unitary package that we are receiving. So because of this, we developed our own solution in this, in, for this capture process. And we asked it in packet bit and go pass it DNS, where we use, <coughs> where we implemented the fragmenting IP, as, IP assembly, the TCP assembly, and the direct connection to the database. The good thing is that we use most of the things that are already in use and use different libraries that are updated daily. Mostly, the source code is, is there if you want to search for it. Or there is, this is mostly a library. This is not a connection to the database. So you can use another system to storage the information, for example. Now, 
with this software, the DNS subpoint has been named. We start looking at the storage. We we look at some of the most time series database systems that are using nowadays in production, like Prometheus, Druid, InfluxDB, or OpenTSDB. And for to compare them, to compare them, uh, we did a small benchmark in uh, mostly commodity hardware, like it's only two cores, like Java, it does RAM, and, and you can use you can find this type of hardware anywhere, so you can do the storage of the information pretty easily. And we did a, a testing rate of about 3,000 packets per second. That is something close to what Nick Chile is receiving in, in one of our servers. Uh, we measured the CPU size, the primary memory, secondary memory, and how much time we took to wait for the database. We did mostly three, three tests that was looking for the most query domains. That's say like some information that we didn't have. We also look for the um, most IP prefix where we are looking for, and mostly a, a base one to like the number of results we are we are receiving. Now for the top query domains, we got this these results that they are normalized. We we saw that three and click house were the ones that we go that answered the most faster time. In answering more than under a second, and we call it the top query domains that we are receiving. We also saw that they also do also do very good on RAM, but they didn't do very good in the disk usage, where where Prometheus and Elast and Prometheus is the best compressing the information. And we also saw that Elasticsearch didn't start, didn't answer the question after three hours of our benchmark, mostly because they were prioritizing the ingestion of data instead of extracting the data from the database. So, can I just ask you? Yeah. Because um, there's no um, no numbers. Yeah, it's, not, it's These normal. These are four different things. So on CPU, higher is bad. Yeah. On RAM, higher is bad. Okay. On yeah. disk, higher is bad. Uh, yeah. But and on query time, lower is good. You know, higher is bad. So higher is bad for yeah. all of these. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just um, trying to uh, digest it. <laughs> yeah. Last uh, Let's see. Prometheus answer like more than 60 seconds. So it's bad. Pretty bad for a monitoring system. Uh, and clicks on Android answering always under a second. So this one, this was for 3,000 points per second, and we wanted to try it with more packages per second, so we tried with 10,000 and 40,000. And we saw that read started to scale pretty badly. It went to the order of 20 seconds, and ClickHouse increased for 0 0.15 to 0 0.2. So it was scaling pretty well. So with this information, we you, we decided to use ClickHouse for the storage part of, of the process of the monitoring. And finally, we went to the visualization. We looked for Kibana, Grafana, and Graphic. That are one of the most used software to do the visualization of the different monitoring systems. We looked at already implemented plugins to connect to the database. And we saw that Grafana was the only one that, that we can use, but the database is available right now. And we didn't want to get to develop a net plugin, for example, to a different visualization software. So we used that already on Grafana, but we had to modify it to make sure it works with the alerting system because it wasn't implemented before that. So with this, this different software, we decided to integrate the, these two generators of modern solutions. And I gonna now I wanna show you some of the results that we got. Most of the architecture of, of the process was uh, capture predicates of the DNS service that can be in the DNS service or externally replicating the package that they're receiving. As for the storage file, the storage, we use ClickHouse and you guys one server or multiple servers to store the information in case you have a lot of information. You can also delete the old ones in case you need. There's a partition support for ClickHouse. Finally, for the visualization, we use Grafana to aggregate information and show it to the user and generate different alerts. Now we did some low simulation. For example, we use a normal simulation for about 7,000 packets per second that were live capture of the production service of Nick Chile. 
it runs for about 36 hours and we, we capture some calls uh, like a million packets. We, the information was compressed from 62 gigabytes to 7.1 gigabytes and we use about 8.3 bytes for every package. That's a lot lower than the original package size. We also do a cruise simulation where, where we do a DDoS to ourselves. So we receive like something close to 120,000 packets per second. And we say we can, that the average of usage of our storage system, that is crystals, use approximately 30%. So we thought that we can support a high load information and we can expect to scale it a lot better if we use a little better hardware because like using two, GB, two cores only and eight devices on RAM, we don't have too much, too much hardware. It's pretty easy to scale that. This is one part of the panel that we had the result. For example, we can see which domains are the top query domains that, we, that can give some information about what's happening right now. For example, if there's a high domain, that is receiving uh, approximately 160 uh, queries every minute. We are, can also see the unique query domains that we are receiving. For example, we have receiving like 500 different, different domains queries every second. We also have the average packet size and the total packet size that is around 280 bytes. We also have some more common information that is used in other monitoring systems like the packet count by IP version, by transfer protocol, the IPv4 prefix and IPv6 prefix that are, that are being used right now. And we also have if this one changed, some of the more, some of the query information about the queries we are seeing that the question type, the query class, response code, the operation code, and if it's using EDNS on and the DUB distance. Finally, we have a um, SQL interface actually with the ClickHouse. We have ClickHouse database where we can search for every every question and answer individually. We can search by, for example, the question, the URL, the, to see if which, which packages we are receiving and are showing a third frame, for example. That is pretty important to start debugging, for example, different stuff, different problems. Well, what are the return, why are returning NX domains, for example, maybe we can search for the, um, different databases and compare if it was correct or not, and detect problems more easily. And, and finally, for the lighting, we use Grafana alerts. We can define a different thresholds for a minimum and maximum, and send a div, an alert when, for example, we detect a peak of 7,000 packets per second we are, that we are seeing in this image. Now, some attack examples. For example, this is uh, one of the typical DNS, DNS attack, a uh, flood of packets, where we see an um, increasing from 2,000, for example, to 6,000. But what are the DNS attack is this? Uh, we don't have that much information. Now, for example, we can see with the top query domains, we have, we see that it stays relatively even, like we don't see an increase of an, any particular DNS attack, uh, DNS domain. And so, for example, we can see that this is a, we, uh, they are querying about a random string, and mostly, mostly of them don't, yeah, the ISP don't have the query cache, so we are receiving it directly to us, and this, this is very hard to mitigate, and it's a random DNS query attack. Now, what happened in track was like this, where we are seeing a 3,000 uh, package per minute. Now we can see, for example, is we are receiving a DX query to example for that CL, for example. So the ISP have to catch it, the query cache. So that means we are receiving the queries directly. So the the attackers have more DX control, for example, uh, of the where they are they are sending to the NS package. And also the package are, are used to graph because they are pretty static. They don't need to insert random information in the package and the, this attack can be of a very high load. We also can see that the unique domains stay the same, so so that means that also can can give us some information about how the price are done. Yes. Can you explain the top chart there? Top queries domain, top top query domains. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like it's 
down very low and then all of a sudden you have a big jump yeah so is that how many how many domains is the top query domains you have some uh, algorithm for what you consider the top is it the top 10 percent five percent use the top five query domains because Showing more than 10% is a lot. For example, we are receiving 6,500. Right. So top five or 5%? The top five, not 5%. Top five. Yes. Okay, so the top five went from almost nothing to yeah. 250 uh, quarters per month. Yeah, that, okay. that helps you. Uh, for example, we need to cash, for example, to see response or something like that. Got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, now, some of the limitations uh, of this system right now is. It's not a handy how the information that we have the DNS package. So I, we only store the the question of, of the DNS package and we don't store any special information that the DNS package have. And we also require a small modification uh, for the distributed capability of ClickHouse, but it's mostly uh, change the, the the different tables on the ClickHouse table to distribute it. It's not very, uh, very hard work. If you need that, you, you can change it pretty easily. And finally, the alerting system is a little too simple, uh, only defining thresholds and not using two different tools like, for example, machine learning to learn when atta an attack is happening. Finally, as a conclusion, we got a working DNS monitoring solution with DNS sampling, ClickHouse and Grafana. Um, we are looking to make our monitoring more intelligent. Uh, we have one engineer that is looking to use machine learning to detect more, to get more information of the DNS, DNS services we have right now. And we, look, we learned that using open source software to use our solutions can help us a lot with the resources and get a working solution more easily. Any questions? It was Phil Bestimus speaking, thank you. Um. I think uh, we were talking before we got started. Uh, yes. What's the status of it now? Are you using it in production? <clears throat> we are currently not using it in production. We are only testing it right now because it's, it's pretty hard to get uh, one of the software in production. So we're still test testing it in, in some private software, in private servers. So you're still using the prior system? Yes. You're still using DSC that we're using right now. Um, this source code here, um, if one were to go there, is it one package we're going to see or what, what kind of modifications have you done to the original source code that you found? Yeah, uh, the, the link description is the DNS link that is the capture part and we, we gave for, uh, for it to be easy to access a token image with the three parts assembled or reassembled. So we have the source code with assembly with, uh, with the DNS capture by a part. We also have the the queries that we that you need to mount a ClickHouse instance and also have a small pa example panel to check the information. So you can use a Docker image if you want to test it, for example. Oh, it's a Docker image. You you can also use it. You oh. can also use the original one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's easy then if it's. Yeah, you use token compost app and you have all the stack for overall. Because I think for a lot of people it's the integration of all these components that makes the DNS monitoring so difficult. Yeah. So another thing that I asked you before we started the webinar was whether or not you've considered looking at not just query data but uh registry data, uh since you're a TLD. I know that uh some folks have registry data going back a long ways. They can look at uh, how long after the uh, domain was registered, was it actually in use, and look for patterns that indicate it's, uh, you know, someone is planning abuse when they register the domain. Is that something that you've you've done with any of your existing data? Um, well, as I told before, uh, I think that there, there is a, what we, it's actually starting with the registers I don't know, last year. And the, the idea came to light in one of the technical meetings, but I, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, of course, this can be easy integrated for analysis, uh, registry data. I don't know if Nick put it uh, forth in, I uh, really put it forth apart from the lab in, in study the, the register data. I, I, I was trying to remember if there was some 
side project uh, doing that that work and put it there, register data and sort of monitoring and mm -hmm. statistic or was a offline analysis of registering that. Right, right. But uh, yeah, as I told you before, this is, could be pretty easy integrating and to, to have a real time data from the register. Okay, so um, Eddie, I think you can speak if if you want to uh, ask your questions. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I didn't know if I could talk or not. <laughs> can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay, excellent. So uh, Felipe, a great presentation. Uh, yeah, very informative. So I, I'm curious about uh, you know this this so far has been you've done extensive testing on this. Um, okay. What are you? What is Nick? that Chile currently using for, uh, if you can say, what are you currently using for monitoring um, and alerting? Because one thing you mentioned in the presentation is that you wanted more uh, out of the alert part of this. So I'm curious what, what you like about your existing system uh, and then also what your timeline is to moving to the new one. Uh, I can answer, yeah, yeah. Javier Rosso here. Uh, actually, uh, Nick Chile is in DSC. Uh, okay. Okay. We have to present the final solution in yeah. form of components or containers or something like be easy to install and run. And the hard part is to try to uh, make a, a schedule for for that. Yeah, we we are we are still uh, uh, how, how can I explain it? Um, when when we believe that this is finished and uh, ready to be in production, so we might we want to make some more tests. We have to present it back to Nick Chile and say, okay, so now we have to do a skill for for uh, put it in production and at the Nick Chile server. And uh, we were talking about the starting with the server in Chile in Santiago and see how it's working and then start to propagate it to the to servers abroad. But uh, we hope that this happened this year, but I cannot assure that it is a, or, or, or all engineers are full time working on their own work. So installing, installing something else is, is uh, time that I, they, they have to consume. So everything has to be ready and, and take uh, less effort as possible. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, no, great. Thank you for that answer. Very good. So you mentioned that you have secondary services from uh, Pacific Clearinghouse and NetNod. Um, so that complicates things. I mean, besides the fact that you have nodes in all these countries, some of these nodes are not, uh, they're not your nodes, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, um, presumably, uh, well, do you expect to be able to collect all the data or are you just going to be doing sampling? Uh, some of these, uh, nodes in other countries, I'm thinking, maybe don't even have the ability to locally capture and store. Yeah, that, that, that's 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 our decision that Nick to the operational part right. has has to take. Yeah. We we are just <laughs> building the, the the tool. You're building the tool. Okay, so someone else will be deploying the tool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? Another thing I'm curious about, uh, Felipe, is uh, did you look at uh, doing DNS tap at all? I I can't flip back through the slides, so I don't know if if that would completely meet all your needs. So I'm just curious if you considered that um, or what your thoughts were on that. Can you repeat the first part of the question? Yes. Did you consider using uh, DNS tap at yeah. all? Or yeah, okay. Uh, which was DNS tap? I need to remember. So DNSAP is is not uh, really uh, PCAPs. It will it will collect your query data. Um, uh, it will uh, uh, stream your queries um, uh, yeah, to a socket, basically, and um, it, it's a little bit different. I think you wouldn't get uh, all of the packet information you're getting here, but it's a uh, it's an open source project that we have been supporting. Um, Gee, Eddie, do you know when we added the DNS tap support? It's like TCP replay or something like that. Oh, yeah. I want to say that it was a 9.11. I think uh, so. I think it was a 9.11. Yeah. Um, and I agree, you wouldn't get as much data as they're getting here, I don't think. Uh, but it just—I was just curious if they—if they looked at that at all. Um, 
No, I don't think we look at Bienesta. We look at Compactor that was developed by the ICANN, I think. And they capture in a pretty strange packet format and it had a halt information. But still, it took like one minute between each run to get information and get it to the servers, for example. What was, what was this tool? Compactor. Compactor. Yeah, it's okay. from the DNS stat toolset. Okay. We are also looking if, 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 if it's possible to replace, for example, what we developed so we can use a fully open source solution and we didn't have to manage the different stack part. So since your main goal in collecting this is to be able to quickly identify if there's an abuse scenario, have you tried um, uh, modeling how you would respond? That's the second part of the research. Um, mostly the first part was developing the solution, so we, we got actually have the information, and now we can, and after that we can start seeing how we can use this information to to start, for example, mitigating different attacks, or start by detecting them is at least the start. Right, because the, the fact that you have this large, is this any cast? Yes. Yeah, this large any cast deployment is going to make the mitigation also um, more complicated. Yeah. yeah. This presentation hand on, hang on with me. Oh, you stopped sharing it. Yeah. Let me refresh it. Do I have internet? Yeah, I've lost my internet connection. Sure. <laughs> but you have to connect again. Okay. So I can go back to share. Is there a particular slide you're looking for? No, it's just have it. If Okay. Do we have any more questions? Okay. Um, so if anybody else has any questions, we'll just hang out here for just a sec and you can type it into the chat window. Um, otherwise, that is, um, that's really what we wanted to cover um, was uh, this experience with uh, evaluating and then uh, selecting these uh, three components and then doing the integration. Um, and some uh, scalability and performance testing. And it sounds like as far as experience in production, uh, we'll have to wait and... <laughs> <laughs> Next year. Yeah. Yeah. Next year until the operations guys, these are the research guys, until the operations guys um, uh, actually get it into production. So there's a couple comments in the, in the chat window, but uh, they don't look like questions. Um, so I'm just going to go back and leave it on once I get to it, do the uh, to the link <laughs> where you show. Sorry, it's making me a little dizzy going this fast. You've got some beautiful visual visualizations, though. Um, did you have to do a lot of customization and Grafana to get that? Uh, no, we use an old plugin solution that they, that they had before mm -hmm. and just updated to the current version of Grafana. And it's most, mostly what all, all the folks. Well, you must have done some stuff because you picked, yeah. for instance, the top five as your top. No, they, those were click house data, database oh, that queries. Canned? Yeah, they oh. were queries. So not as not as easy ones, but it still took time to do. Great. Great. Well, um, all right. It looks like there are no more questions. So I'm just going to thank the panelists. Um, uh, this. Uh, presentation is a little shorter than our usual webinar because it was actually designed for a 20 minute slot at 3Con. And you guys got to see it before 3Con did. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. And um, that's the end of our presentation. Um, if you do have questions later, um, you have to send them to uh, Felipe and Javier, whose emails on the presentation, because at ISC, we would not be able to answer the questions. I'm hoping that other users um, will um, uh, be willing to also uh, volunteer to give a presentation on some of their uh, research or operational uh, successes or challenges, because I think. Um, here at ISC, even though we develop DNS software and we run the F-Fruit system, uh, we certainly do not have all the answers when it comes to uh, operations in the DNS area. And um, uh, uh, 
there's a lot that uh, users can learn from other users. So anyway, uh, thank you very much. And uh, that's the end of the webinar. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you a lot, Felipe. That was great. Thanks. All right. Take care. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah.